I like that your uh, cards and piles of things are kind of like just more like decorations at this point on your playmat. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's this is like this is kind of like uh, like if if uh, Arena ever does a a setting on Arena of like an actual person's mm-hmm. desk where they play Magic. This is what it would look like. <laughs> yeah, the the slightly spilled pile of cards. Yep. Some metal tokens, a box of. Mm -hmm. a commander tray hidden under everything (laughs) exactly yeah you got and then also you know throw in something like this you know you got a tape measure sitting there Um, (laughs) anyway so what quick comment so like today we're we're building or we we built these decks we both went to our own Uh pre-releases uh-huh uh today we're playing with our pre-release decks to see how that goes (laughs) Uh yeah so these are the the the, uh mkm pre-release decks let us know if you think Nate's going to win or if I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Let us know before. Stop the pause and go down and, and guess who's going to win. Maybe we should we should say our uh, our archetypes. Uh, we don't have to go into details of what we got, but we can talk about. <laughs> well, for some context, too, I went undefeated. So. <laughs> yeah, I went one and, but one, no. and one drop. <laughs> I'm, I'm Orzov, so okay. white, black. Okay, I'm Simic. So, okay. Yeah, you're, you're probably going to slam me but we'll see we'll see yeah get guess in the comments all right oh so today we we of course watch reddit and all this other stuff and there's been a lot of posts lately of people complaining about edh and commander and how there's just too many gosh darn rules yep and not even ones that are written down yeah and i think i think that's the key i think this was sparked particularly from a post i think it was a twitter post that got shared on reddit from um saffron olive uh, uh seth better known as saffron olive i think is the way it goes where he he said one of the well let me pull it up let me let me get the quote and i've seen a couple other posts around it too like people complaining that often and it's like a lot of the was i in the wrong scenarios and it's like people breaking the unwritten rules of magic and then it, it really does i think the synopsis of what i'll be talking about is the fact that it really gets down to play group and play style is a big part uh-huh. where if you you play against people who are okay with just magic and if you're competitive it's fine they're it's just magic's magic it's not really a deal people only run into problems with the unwritten rules of commander and like little pods casual magic with air quotes mm-hmm. and the conversations that go with that where people tend to get a lot more butt hurt about people playing the game that's the game yeah well I, and i found the thing because i realized i shared it with you in our chat so i was like oh i should just read it from there so saffron olive uh, said the other day the number of unwritten rules in commander that you are expected to follow but aren't enforced by the ban list or rules is probably my least favorite part of the format it's like commander is a bunch of 80 year old baseball fans that throw a fit when someone flips a bat and uh, yeah like i can i can see what what he's saying, especially because my father-in-law is one of those 80 year olds. <laughs> yeah. It, like I can, I can definitely see what he's saying, especially because there's, there, there are a lot of unwritten rules and we, in, in the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because we, we talk about those unwritten rules a lot. It's hard because, because some of those unwritten rules come from a place of wanting everybody to have fun. I think. Yeah. Um, I think some of the unwritten rules are coming from a place of, I want to have fun. So I don't want this thing to happen, you know, like reference any of the decks I've played against you <laughs> stasis, uh, you know, no. but, but the, the, like, but there's a point, like there's a point there that some of the rules I think stem from people being like, I want to have fun. So I, there, there's this rule. And, and I think, and what has happened is it's worked its way into the roots of commander. Mm-hmm. What I find interesting is if you look at the mtgcommander.net where they just put up on the ban list, they have added the reasoning why each card has been banned. Prior to them doing this, the reasons why certain cards were banned were just disparate across the internet on articles and and uh, random explanations, state of the commander, whatever's over the course of the last 20 
ish years where this is the first time where it's codified in a location. This is why they didn't ban this. And some of the reasoning feels similar to some of these unwritten rules. Like one of the reasons they banned Ancestral Recall, among other cards, is because Ancestral Recall is an extremely expensive card and they did not want people to think the commander had a high price tag to enter the format. That's borderline unwritten. I recognize that it's written and therefore is the definition of a written right. rule, but it feels like it comes from the same place where it's the same place as what we were talking about last week, where, you know, if somebody kills you, like it's, it's completely acceptable for you to attack back as, as retaliation. You know what I mean? Like it kind of feels like it's coming from the same place. With the ancestral recall as like the, the example, because I know that's the same thing with like a lot of the, the cards that were banned out of the gate, right? Mm -hmm. is they're expensive they're just massively expensive and unfortunately when you have a format that's eternal like people are going to want to play the best cards people yep. min max like crazy that with them that's the whole competitive half of the game mm -hmm. and it, it's the same with every other format right mm -hmm. there's cards that are banned strictly for one deck archetype <laughs> yeah uh -huh. it's like nope can't do that now yeah. <laughs> but it's good that they at least put the descriptions in there and like why and they're they're okay to updating them later if they're not easy to understand or you know when they revisit and unban something because you know maybe it's no longer pertinent mm -hmm. right like they've gone through and they've been doing that for a few other cards the fact that it's one ban list now i know some people don't agree with i remember back when it was two mm -hmm. and like that that got confusing where it's like okay well it's okay in the 99, but not the 100 or yeah. as commander, right? Yeah. And that's where people were like, the problem with like Golos being banned. They're like, well, just ban him as a commander, bring them back, the, let him do the 99. It's like, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Braids is banned for both. Um, Emrakul is too as well, right? Like, yeah. it, well, I, I can think of cards that used to be, and they, they've changed their direction on that. But there's other ones in there that I know they've banned specifically because they aren't fun to play against or they cause slow play. Yeah. Right. And that, that's a whole different thing, too. And it's like, when you think about the deck you're playing, if you're talking about the unwritten rules of Magic, what kind of game are you expecting that deck to make, right? And that's where people have problems with stacks, yeah. right? They have problem playing against control players because those games tend to go a lot longer. You have the example of the one commander game you had where they knocked you out when you could have helped the game not go an extra four hours or yeah, whatever exactly. it was. Yeah, <laughs> Like, okay, well, this is what you're asking for because that's what they're playing. Yep. And that that gets into that territory, though, right? Where it's like people expect quick games nowadays, and that's not always the case. Like, when I think of Commander, I think of back in the day where a three to four hour game was typical because there wasn't the cards out to make it faster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like distracted and no one remembers whose turn it is. Yeah, well, there's there's that problem too. Well, I did I did find it interesting how they in the State of Commander article, which I think was partially what spurred Saffron Olive's comment because of the discourse that came out from the state of the format that was released last week, that the that they were saying that despite the fact the commander is very diverse or very complex right now. It's extremely complex right now. Part of the reason for that is because of all these cards coming into the format. But mm -hmm. another side effect of that is that the format is extremely diverse. And they were commenting about how commander now is starting to feel a little bit like commander did way back when it first started because so many cards are being shoved into the format and so many people are gravitating towards the card they want to play people gravitate to the cards cards they like and you are always finding new cards across the table from you which i, th I think is fun and that mm -hmm. was the way it was back when the the format started because the format was started so people could play these random unplayable cards that yeah. are sitting in their collections you know well and i i know i do it i know you do too where it's like there's the, the optimal way to build something and then there's the okay what what kind of weird thing can I put in here that just people aren't going to know how to do? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, to be fair, that's, like, most of the inspiration I get from random posts on Reddit where someone's asking about an old card or, in the case of, like, another one, people are asking, like, hey, what's some great old tech that you have that is always weird and does weird interactions? And, like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I ordered, like, three different cards last night because of it. But. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> well, that that's one thing I like about listening to the podcast uh shivam and wheeler love magic because just hearing wheeler tell shivam about this old school tech the edh 
you know, combo and, and Shivam going, oh, that's amazing. Or vice versa. You know, that happens sometimes too. And then me learning about the combo as well is just, I just love that. I love it. The, the piece with this, though, what we get into is like the, the these home band lists mm-hmm. you're talking about. And like, we've seen shops do them too. Like we've had those discussions in the past where it's like you get this weird shop that has like a, a massive, like 200 plus however many cards it was band list. Like, like yeah. if you want to play here, if you you can't play these cards, it's like, okay, well then be shorter to make a list of what I can. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Again, the big part is like, if it's a kitchen table and it's your friend group, usually that's a, like an easier conversation, you know, Apparently, according to Reddit, a lot of people don't have these conversations, yeah. but you also only ever hear the bad stories, right? Yeah. You run into the problem where it's like, okay, well, maybe we don't play the Ur Dragon, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, maybe maybe we don't play Armageddon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, stuff like that, where it's like, if you keep doing it and people don't like it or keep targeting you because, you know, you're playing that deck, you know, adjust, like, adapt. Like, I get it. Like, a lot of people have that one deck they built. It's like there's no problem picking up one of these precons because they're actually decent nowadays. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, running that, right? You're touching on a very important thing that I, I think might be what is caused that tweet and, and even the, the wider discourse and, and the conversations where people come in, the, the rough stories that we hear about Commander. And it's communication. It, mm-hmm. it, if you communicate with your opponents about what, you want to get out of your game, then that's going to be good for everybody because, and and I know it's rough because there's a lot of us who do not like confrontation. So when you sit down at a table and you start unpacking all your stuff and you start having that conversation of, Hey, what's your power level? What do we plan? What don't we want to play? There's this inherent, like, okay, I, at least for me, I, I, I could be wrong, but for other people, but I would imagine for a lot of folks, there's this feeling of, I, I want to play a game, and if they say something I don't necessarily agree with, as long as it's not too big of a deal, I'll probably just be, say, okay, fine. The problem with that is you're setting yourself up to not have a good time, especially if it's something that you really don't like to play against. Now, there's a give and take there, but right. I think it's communication is the most important thing and why you should have these conversations and make sure that if you do have unwritten rules... <laughs> You make them known. Like if you have deal breakers, lay them out on the table instead of keeping quiet. You know, yeah, it may lead to some uncomfortable conversations, but I would rather have a minute or two of, oh, uh, okay, yeah, may- maybe maybe I need to find a different table and then go find a different table and have fun than sit down at a table and have two hours of discomfort because you didn't communicate. The interesting thing there too is I think a lot of the problems stem from players who don't either have a lot of decks they didn't bring more than one deck or they don't have a lot of Mm -hmm. experience with dealing with adversity with like what they feel like what they come across at the table right where yeah you know you you lose the infect then all of a sudden it's like i'm never playing against that again yeah right where a lot of the times it's not necessarily it it, it could be multiple factors because you could just sit down with someone who comes in with a power level 11 and just annihilates right mm-hmm. where whereas you if you sat down and played against someone with a precon maybe your deck would do better right mm-hmm. if you're coming in with a homebrew and it's not been tested very well maybe it's not a good deck build or maybe you, in my case sometimes you just don't draw your lands <laughs> it happens <laughs> but with that in mind though the other factor is also the player right and like you know we're we're all perfect at this game and no one could get any better at it mm-hmm. so yeah. Keep that in mind where you, you might be somewhere else on your player journey and we're all still learning. But no, because like it happens. Like you, you mix things up, especially if you're playing against people you've never played before. You're nervous. You can't hear what they're saying if someone's not speaking up well. The other shop I went to, if you have a bunch of teenagers behind you just yelling and being obnoxious and you can't hear anything at the table, that's a problem too, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. The There's a lot of situations where it happens, but like the level of communication that you have with the table, if they're not willing to just at least discuss talk and be like hey this is what you can expect from my deck if you ask them if you don't ask that's on you yeah um but that that open level of communication that and like i've seen those stories before too where it's like hey i asked my opponent like what their cards are doing what cards are they playing and they won't tell me like like okay so uh i won't tell you what mine are then <laughs> uh-huh. right or like i have to get up and walk around the table to read their cards and they don't like that it's like well freaking read it to me yeah um 
like that's hostile play, right? That's yeah. that's not even like an unwritten rule. That's unsportsmanlike. But yeah, well, well I was just going to say that I think I think some unwritten rules get confused for unsportsmanlike rules. <laughs> like there yes, are just yes. there's there's playing the game in a way you like and being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> don't be <Yeah>. a dick <laughs> you know? yeah no not at all don't be richard so <laughs> yeah i mean it, and it's, that's really what it comes out to though but like when you think about it you don't really have problems if you can have a conversation and say okay well this is what i'm bringing to the table like what's everyone else bringing and you just you're not trying to like power game to say okay well you're playing you know voltron so i'm going to play artifact hate right like mm-hmm. not like that kind of metagaming but like I'm not going to show up and play my stacks deck if people aren't ready for that. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, it would be courteous, right? Like, I, mm-hmm. I'll i come in with a mi- plan to play a mid-power level deck that I like. It does okay, and it can lose. But it's not like, oh, my God, I'm going to be distraught if I don't win or if like, someone beats me out or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. just it's just that expectation setting, and that's the big piece where I think, unfortunately, these unwritten rules come in is people set these expectations for themselves and they just either don't know how to communicate or they're not great. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Where it's like, oh, no, you can't play that because I don't like it. Maybe you should leave the table. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important to remember to, to, to differentiate between what's in a quote-unquote unwritten rule versus mm-hmm. being a jerk. Or or being unreasonable, right. I think it's you know we're we again the, the, we say this at least every other episode. This is a game. We 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 come to this game to have fun, and yes, there are aspects to the game that can be unfun. It's it's like a movie. You know, if you go to an action movie, a good action movie, it's not going to be wall to wall action. It's going to advertise it as wall to wall action, but it's <laughs> not. There are going to be quiet scenes. There are going to be scenes that aren't, you know, just insane explosions and everything because it's something known as pacing. And magic has its a pacing of its own that that sometimes you you have to do an unfun thing to get to the fun thing. And so it's important to check yourself on if you're being unreasonable in what you're expecting to get out of the game, I think. Even then... It- isn't everyone showing up expecting to have fun and to win? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like winning debatable, <laughs> Yeah, but to have fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay, would yeah. it be playing if it was otherwise? Yeah. And that, that's, yeah. That's what it comes out to. I, I think the, the part to drive home here though, is like, think about like what your expectations are as a player when you show up to game. And this isn't just commander. This is when you talk about like any other format to draft night, whatever it may be, what, what are you bringing to the table in the terms of how you're behaving as a, an opponent to, you know, the match, right? Like, mm-hmm. are you being courteous? Are you letting them know what's going on? Are you making sure they notice things that are going on on your board state that they might not had seen directly? Like, Hey, mm-hmm. I'm activating this ability, like this triggered, right? I'm explaining this triggered like playing with you last week. I, and I searched that card. I was like, Hey, this is what I'm putting in my graveyard. I didn't just sneak it in there. Yep. Right. Yep. It's about, like over communicating and making sure it's like, hey, if I'm going to win, it's not because I cheated you. Yeah, exactly. And that that's not even unwritten. Just <laughs> again, yeah. Don't be Richard. Exactly. Um, exactly. Also, just come in open minded. Like, yeah. Come in saying, okay, well, this is what I can bring to the table. This is what I can do. If I only have one deck, okay, let's communicate that this is like where I am on a comfort wise, power wise. How am, am I a you know experienced player? Are these new people I'm playing against? Are these my buddies? Mm-hmm. like everything that goes into it but just be nice yeah and also i think the only unwritten rule i'd ever put out there come prepared yeah if your deck makes tokens have tokens yeah or have, <laughs> or have a way to show the tokens you know have like, a way uh, to track your life <laughs> exactly yeah you know yeah come prepared you know yeah you don't have oh. to be like me and have this whole freaking setup here you know with gold crap coming out of my ears yeah but, yeah. but, but. you can still be prepared if you're newer, it's fine. You don't you don't have to have a playmat. You don't have to have sleeves. It's recommended. Mm-hmm. Um, but to the same thing, like a way to track your life. It doesn't even have to be dye. It can be a piece of paper with a pencil, mm-hmm. as long as it's acknowledgeable. If you have a smartphone, guess what? Get the companion app. It has a life tracker in there, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Not many people don't have smartphones nowadays. <laughs> Play this game without having a smartphone on hand because 
sometimes you might not have a card in English. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's what I was going to say. Like I, I always have um, my phone with me because I usually use that to track my life. But yeah, that's definitely a uh, thing that you should have is, is, you know, your smartphone at least nearby and somewhat charged. So that way you can, you know, look up stuff if you need to and that sort of thing. I think, I think the last unwritten rule I would put out there and you can disagree with me, you know, I call you a monster if you do <laughs> is mind the space. Uh-huh. Don't over encroach on the table, right? Don't have your bag laying out in the middle of the floor and don't have any open beverages on the table. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I mean, I guess to that same point, if you're going to be playing for a night, get something to drink before the game starts. Oh, Go yeah. potty in the break. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. That, that definitely is, is something you should do. But, uh, but yeah, but yeah, I think, I think that's, that's what, it, okay. So we've, we've, I think we've covered our bases. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those, those, are the, again, it's just, you know, don't be a Richard and be courteous, communicate and mind your space. Yeah. That, that's really, uh, that's where I would put the, the minimal of like just being a better player. Mm-hmm. Right. And being able to say, okay, well, I'm going to make this an environment where I'm not set up to fail. Yeah. Yeah. You're setting yourself up to have a fun time. That's that's right. really what you're doing. You know. Well, it, that and I, I guess one last thing that falls in the don't be a Richard category, and this is a big one. Just please don't come if you're sick. Oh, yeah. Oh, please don't. Like, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> we, because, yeah, we're, you're, you're across people. I, I oh, geez, I could tell stories. I could tell stories. We, we should end now because I, I will go on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> They're all explosive time. And that about does it for today. You can find DM Dingo on Twitch or on the FDS Discord. You can find me, FDSMTG, here on YouTube, FDSMTG, as well as on Twitter, Threads, Blue Sky, FDSMTG, basically everywhere. Also on TikTok as well. Thank you so much for listening and you all have a wonderful day.